Clint here, Cairns Dive Adventures. Join me for underwater photography tips, diving the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. All right, let's go. So to get nice photographs underwater, typically you need light. So you can use a little compact camera um, even use the little flash on the edge of the compact camera and if you get really really close that the flash can have an effect on your object you'll end up taking nice photos and get some color in your shots um, if you want to sort of step it up to the next level you could use a compact camera with a strobe light on board um, and this will really push out a lot more light and really increase your underwater photography um, and the ability to capture more colors in your photographs the next level up is something like this, which is a uh, DSLR underwater camera rig. Um, that coupled with an interchangeable lens, a wide angle dome port. Um, we've also got strobe lights and I've, I even run a focus light on this camera as well. So this focus light helps the camera to focus uh, in low light. So a couple of tips to help you get better underwater photographs. Typically, if you've got your camera set up and you've got your strobe light, um, you wanna get close, okay? So typically, starting out with wide angle photography, which is sort of what I think is the easiest form of photography to at least try and capture shots and with some color and uh, some substance is a wide angle shot. Um, get down below your subject. So typically, line of sight, most people wouldn't take a shot that way or they'll even, if you're snorkeling on the surface or if you're diving and you see Nemo down there, you tend to shoot down towards the bottom and that's typically fading away into blue, blue, black and gray. Um, generally, you're much better to get below your subject and shoot up on a 45 degree angle towards the surface. Okay, by doing that, um, you've got your object right directly in front of you. Um, if you're using a camera that's got strobes on it, um, video cameras with uh, light, your object's getting plenty of light filling it. Um, you're shooting up on a 45 degree angle into the sun um, and typically using the sun as an element in the background of your photograph. Um, another tip is if you've got like a giant sea fan, popping there. Um, typically you don't really want to get up and shoot down towards the sea fan. You want to get below the sea fan, shoot on a 45 degree towards the surface. Once again, have that sun as an element uh, in your shot. Um, even if you could have a diver come in and be part of your composition um, on that 45 degree angle shooting towards the surface. Um, getting close, you want to be 1.5 to 2 meters away and you want to be shooting up. That's where you want to pump your strobes. Um, I always check my photographs after every shot. So take a shot, press your playback button on the back of your camera, have a look. If it's dull, it's gray, there's no color, you haven't got enough light on your subject, get closer, turn your strobes up, try again, bam, okay, now I'm starting to get some color. Next, we're gonna talk about camera settings. So typically I use um, a DSLR. This is a Nikon D90. They're quite an old camera uh, now, but they're a DSLR style camera with an interchangeable lens. Um, there's a whole, as you know, millions of different options for camera gear underwater, but typically all modern cameras are awesome nowadays. Some obviously better than others. Um, but typically you wanna be able to have a camera and have your settings dialed into the camera. So to really um, pull really nice shots, basically, these are the, this is what I use and hopefully it might be tips that would help you. So I run my camera in RAW, so that's your file setting, um, the storage of your camera. So a lot of cameras are default, the storage is JPEG, which is fine for quick editing and things like this. Um, but for high detail and a lot of information inside the photograph itself, you want to shoot raw. Um, that way, if you accidentally overexposed a photograph, you shot it too bright, you underexposed a, a photograph, you shot it too dark, 
um, shooting in raw mode and using photography software like Photoshop um, uh, or Lightroom, you could actually bring that in and recover that photograph um, quite easily, uh, depending on how bad it is. White balance, um, I leave my white balance set to auto. Um, because I'm shooting in RAW, I'm telling my photo imaging software what the white balance is on that photograph, and I'm doing that in post. Um, uh, next, camera shooting settings. I run everything in manual. I never used to. So if you're starting out in underwater photography, a lot of compact cameras will have um, an auto underwater mode. That coupled with a strobe light, straight away you're going to get wonderful photos, especially if you can get close to your subject. But as you sort of move into the spectrum a little bit more, um, you can get a lot more control over your images if you do shoot in full manual mode. So what that means is, uh, this is what I would do, is run your ISO, which is basically your film set speed sensitivity. You want to have that as low as possible. So the lower the setting, so ISO 100, ISO 200, the less grain and the higher the quality of your image. The higher your ISO, the more grain. So typically, the old Nikon D90 that I'm shooting um, I can get that down to ISO 200, which is the lowest setting. Um, so that coupled with strobe lights and the focus light, I find that gives me plenty of light pushing out of the artificial lighting on the camera um, to support getting those low, low ISO numbers. Um, probably the next thing I focus on, um, I run my focus setting on full autofocus continuous and I use the grid. So this is an older D90 and it's only got 11 uh, dot points on the screen. So uh, a lot of newer cameras have 50 and 60 and 160. So there's newer cameras that are even better again, but I find that's fast enough. Um, that is actually why I use the focus light because the focus is not super fast on the D90 um, and, and it does waver and it does wander and it tries to find the subject. But by using a focus light, there's a plenty of light there for the camera to lock onto the subject um, and, and take your shot. I've found in this setup and this rig autofocus continuous on the 11 point setting, uh, 3D, 3D tracking setting um, to be good. It, it's, it's, it's doing what I want it to do. Um, probably next is your aperture. Now, um, I aperture and actually shutter speed. Maybe I'll quickly talk about shutter speed first. Shutter speed is how quickly your shutter opens and closes and lets the light in through your lens. I run my shutter at 200. Um, I sometimes will drop it to 160. If I had a camera that did 180, I don't know if, the, if newer Nikons do do that. This old Nikon jumps between 200 and 160. Um, so I would keep it at, at minimum around 200 because fish move, stuff moves as you're scuba diving, you're moving. So a slower shutter speed means you're letting a lot more, um, uh, can allow for blurriness. So, if, you know, fishes do move. So the quicker your shutter speed is, the quicker you'll capture that image uh, without motion blur inside your image. Um, next is f-stop okay so that's your aperture setting so typically I would always set my camera up with ISO 200 uh, shutter speed 200 um, and my f-stop aperture at f8 so f8 gives you um, generally your your depth of field focus most things are in focus around f8 so it's a pretty good starting point um, get down to 6, 8, 10 meters, 15, 20, down around 20, 25 meters, there's a lot less light. Um, so you're really relying on your strobe lights there, my focus light. Um, if I'm shooting up into the sun, I might push my f-stop f up to f-16, f-18, sometimes f-20, especially if you're shooting directly up into the sun because um, you're letting a lot of light coming straight down the barrel of the lens. So I would, uh, in, in some scenarios, I'll be using f-18, f-16, f-18, f-20, um, still with my 160 to 200 shutter and leaving my ISO on 200. Um, by doing that, I'm really relying on the strobes to really pop the foreground, use the focus light to fill the shadow. So I'll put up a shot now, which is a giant pink sea fan with a scuba diver. This was shot out at Osprey Reef. Um, and this is in about 22 meters of water on the, on the edge of Osprey. And same thing, without the artificial life of the strobes, you know, that's quite a blue gray photograph. And it took me a few shots to get that shots. 
to get that photograph. So gradually I just got closer, took a shot, checked my photograph. Okay, need to add a bit more strobe, get closer, take another shot. Uh, how's my composition? Where's the sun in the photograph? Um, and just trial and error, trial and error. But those are my go-to settings, which would be F8, ISO 200, um, and um, my shutter at 200, 160 to 200. Throughout the dive, the, the aperture is the one thing that I will always be adjusting. So as you get shallower, as the light changes, a cloud comes over, a cloud comes out, there's more sunlight, I'll be adjusting my aperture um, constantly on the fly. So yeah, once you move into using these sorts of rigs, it definitely becomes a lot more hands-on. Uh, constantly adjusting, constantly trying and, and testing. And basically that's the fun of it if you really are into your photography. So you wanna have good buoyancy. So um, if you're a new diver and you're just getting into taking pictures underwater, then my absolute advice is start with just a little compact camera, full auto underwater mode with a strobe on it and just start getting shots that way the camera is doing all the work for you. You can just really rely on your buoyancy and trying to get the composition, getting below, shooting up on a 45 degree angle. Um, if you can do that and, and basically start to grab some really nice shots, you know, then it could be worth thinking about moving into, okay, I wanna put a dome port, wide angle lens on it, I wanna run two dual strobes and um, then start shooting in full manual mode. Um, and you know, that's where, um, basically, all these things take a lot more time and practice and energy, but the end result is you can get a 10 times better photograph. Um, I'm not the best photographer in the world by any means. I love taking pictures, and I just hope that this video has been helpful to you today. Um, please let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. Um, if you've taken some of this information away and it's helped you, I'd love to hear from you. Um, thank you again for listening, and let me know if you'd like to hear more.